Welcome to a new vlog. This is the soldering station and hot air rework station that I've been using for the past 10 years or maybe more. I don't even remember when I got it. It was a really good unit 10 years ago but as time passed I stopped using the soldering iron output uh, because um, I got a better external one. Uh, then I kept using the hot air part of it because I didn't have any alternative and at some point those uh, hot air stations with fans integrated in the handle started flooding the market but um, I didn't like those from the start. It just doesn't feel right to have that big handle with the fan spinning in your hand. Um, it's likely also low quality heating elements and control loops. So I continued using my uh, trusty old uh, Gordak 952 station. However, in recent years, uh, I started feeling the lack of performance on uh, the Gordak station. It got hot uh, pretty slow. Uh, it had pretty poor accuracy on the uh, temperature measurement and probably on the regulation loop as well. But I kept using it uh, because I had uh, no other uh, station here until uh, uh, in recent days when uh, Banggood contacted me and asked if I need any tools for my electronics lab. And so I have asked them to send me this uh, uh, best uh, BST863 hot air uh, station because I have seen it before being reviewed on another channel uh, it's called SDG Electronics and I thought it's a pretty good station and I wanted to try this out myself. Uh, this station is uh, 1200 watts rated uh, with an adjustment range between 100 and 550 degrees Celsius uh, it's a digital control and it has a built-in pump. Like I mentioned, uh, I like hot air stations to have their pump built-in. I could not find the specification for the volume of air this station can push, uh, especially not on Banggood's website, but I did find a mention of uh, 120 liters uh, on uh, another website which gave the specifications of this uh, unit. I'll place a link in the description below the video to uh, Banggood's website with this uh, hot air station. Make sure to check them out because they were nice enough to sponsor this video. This is currently selling for $160 with free shipping on Banggood. It's an offer for the uh, month of September and I think that's a really good deal for a professional hot air station. Especially when you consider the alternative which is the Quick uh, 861 station which currently uh, sells for around $300 on uh, various websites. So let's unbox this. As you can see the uh, uh, box is pretty big and I'm not sure if this is standard or not. Uh, the website just says free shipping but I got this delivered from the EU with uh, UPS at my door so I didn't have to pay any customs fees which is always uh, welcome for these more expensive uh, tools. This is a pretty big box for, for what you get inside. Uh, but uh, you know it's well protected by all of this foam. Inside the box we have the station, a uh, really nice uh, heavy stand for the tool piece, a total of three nozzles, um, a grounding strap and a power cord. And the first thing I notice is this uh, uh, hose which is pretty thick, certainly thicker than what I had on my old Gordak station. But it seems to be a uh, rather soft uh, material, so I think it should be easy to work with. Now, the way this is designed with the tool stand sitting vertically, uh, it makes the, the air hose form this loop, which depending on your bench setup might or might not bother you. You need to know the output uh, with this hose is on the right side of the station. But I really like this uh, stand. It feels like it's uh, all metal construction. It's uh, really hard and uh, sturdy. And you also get this um, uh, accessory here which allows you to uh, remove the uh, nozzles from the uh, uh, handle while they're still hot. There is also a uh, sensor in the handle and it will detect when it's placed into the stand and it will automatically go into standby. On the back of the unit we have the uh, mains IEC input connector with a fuse socket and a jack for the uh, grounding strap 
they've uh, provided in the box. On the front we have the uh, mains on off switch, we have a big LCD with uh, three switches which I believe can be used for presets. When turning on the unit there is this uh, beep you can hear, it's kind of annoying, I don't understand why you would want a startup uh, beep. There is also this annoying beep for every button you press, so I definitely need to do something about that. Maybe later in the teardown we'll see how uh, we can somehow silence the buzzer. Adjustment of temperature and air level is made through the touchscreen control. I'm a bit anti-touch screen control on test gear, so I would have preferred some switches here in the front panel, but don't get me wrong, the touch screen works well on this unit, it has nice big touch keys, and after setting up your presets, you're likely not going to need to adjust the temperature, you'll just be using the presets, uh, like you'll set up a leaded profile, a lead free one, and maybe another one for heat shrink. You have a quick switch for Celsius and Fahrenheit display, you can set the uh, temperature, the air volume and a uh, timer that starts when you lift the tool from the start and you can preset this to have it automatically turn off the heating element after a preset amount of time and go into cool down. You can adjust the temperature and the pump level in increments of one unit and that's just a bit too fine for my taste especially with digital control. Yes, you can keep the button pressed and it has velocity control, it will speed up the adjustment, but I just don't feel like you need one degree of resolution for uh, adjusting the temperature, especially with this annoying buzzer that keeps beeping for every degree you adjust. I think five degrees would have been a nice compromise and that way it would have been five times faster to adjust to full scale temperature and I, I also believe it's nicer to work with round numbers. While well, using the station, the noise level and vibrations seem to be lower when compared to my old Gordak, and that's a good thing, but there's also a negative thing about this uh, station. There is this funny squeaky noise when the motor of the pump starts up or when it slows down. I'll try to capture the noise so you can hear it. I don't know what frequency this is, but it could be either a mechanical noise or electrical noise coming from the motor coils themselves, which can act like, uh, like uh, speaker coils when driven at audible frequencies. I like it how the station starts and stops when the handle is uh, removed or put back on the stand, uh, and then it puts the pump on full blow to quickly cool down the heating element, and when cooling is finished, it goes into standby. This should prolong its life by allowing it uh, not to overheat in the stand. I also noticed the heating up or cooling down times are very short and this is likely due to the high power heating element and the high capacity pump they are using in this station. The handle seems nicely built, uh, it's just a bit too thick or maybe it's because I was used to the old one from the Gordak station uh, which was slightly thinner and I kind of got used to that. This one just feels a bit thick and I think they try to isolate the plastic handle from the heating element to avoid the handle getting hot for prolonged usage. And who knows, maybe after I'll be using this one for a couple of years I'll think this is the best size of handle. And like mentioned in the uh, beginning of the video, the hose is also thicker, but it's soft material, so I don't see a problem working with uh, this setup. The air level seems to be very high on uh, maximum setting, and I'll probably have to dial this down in practice because uh, it will blow components away from the PCB. I'm not sure who would need uh, this much pressure uh, in their hot air station, I just think they, they used a pump which is too powerful for this application. The temperature regulation seems to be good and the temperature reading seems to be accurate but it was hard to get a good measurement because of the uh, airflow. It's not an even distribution of temperature when the air exits the nozzle but depending on how I positioned the thermocouple I was getting the correct reading from my uh, Fluke 87. Now let's also check the uh, inside of this unit, let's do a teardown and by the way for some high resolution photos check out the blog post linked in the description below the video. And after removing a total of uh, 8 screws I was able to slide the cover and we're inside the station. 
A few things stand out uh, from the start. I can see they have used a uh, filter for the mains input and this is to prevent any uh, switching noise from the station being coupled back into the uh, uh, mains wiring and this is for EMC reasons. You can imagine having a uh, 1200 watts heating element that switches on mains voltage that can create some, some noise that uh, you'd want to avoid being coupled back into the network. Mains wiring seems to be uh, well insulated, uh, it's heat shrinked, it's wrapped in this uh, high temperature fiberglass uh, insulation, although I don't think we're, we're seeing any high temperatures inside this enclosure, they did it really nice. I also see there is a lot of uh, unused space inside the station so I think that with a bit of optimization I think they could build a station that is half this size if they really wanted to. Uh, thumbs up for having this uh, ground point next to the uh, mains input connector but it's not exactly best practice to have the earth wire soldered to the connector and then the connection to the chassis to be made over a uh, painted metal. We have a uh, 20 kilo ohm resistor in series with the uh, ESD strap connection. And this is a uh, transformer used to power the electronics and uh, also possibly the motor of the pump. The pump is a nice little compact unit and uh, judging by the uh, number of wires that I see connected to the motor, this is likely a brushle brushless motor with uh, position sensors. The pump is mounted on some uh, uh, rubber feet to isolate the uh, vibrations of the pump. This is the uh, driver board for the motor. It is using uh, one of these special brushless motor driver chips with external MOS MOSFETs. So we have one MOSFET for each of the three phases and some local voltage regulation happening on uh, the same board. I also see a couple of uh, current shunts in here so the main controller can probably monitor if the pump is working or not and our main controller board is on the back of the front panel. This is the uh, microcontroller handling everything and there are no markings on it but we know they like using STC microcontrollers in China so this could be one of those microcontrollers. This is the triac handling the uh, heating element. It's a 40 amp rated triac and it has a nice big heatsink. There's also this uh, secondary smaller heatsink uh, it's probably for a voltage regulator supplying local uh, voltage on, this, on the main board and it's not hanging in the breeze as uh, Dave Jones would say. It's uh, actually soldered to the PCB. It has uh, this uh, mounting tab that it's soldered to the PCB. It's funny how they used through hole decoupling capacitors. Uh, I mean they already had SMD components on this board. Isn't it cheaper to place SMD decoupling capacitors? That's really a strange decision to, to use these capacitors. And here is uh, the uh, annoying buzzer and I'll have to place some double sided tape uh, over this uh, opening to try and make it quieter. And here is the coupling with the exterior hose. We have a uh, channel for the air and another channel for the wires going to the handle. Overall pretty clean construction inside this unit with no major flaws. The only thing I would complain about is the grounding. They soldered wires to the uh, ground tabs and they've placed it over painted metal. I appreciate the fact that they've used a mains filter and all the wires are insulated properly uh, with heat shrink. Another issue I identified was with these uh, tab connectors on the mains IAC connector. They don't seem to be a tight fit and uh, that could cause some problems when we're talking about high currents passing through those connections. So what I did was to uh, take a pair of pliers and just put a bit of pressure on the blade connectors uh, so that when uh, placed back on the connector they were a tight fit. I reassembled the unit and I'll give you my final thoughts now. Well, for me, this is definitely the upgrade I needed. Uh, this station is better in almost any way uh, than my old station. It heats up quickly, it cools down quickly. It auto detects when it's in the stat as well. It has a nice uh, clear display 
with a easy to use uh, user interface and it isn't that expensive either especially now when it's on special the build quality is generally good and the grounding point issue as well as the blade connectors can be fixed by the user so i would recommend checking those uh, upon arrival if you get one of these but if you are looking for a proper hot air station and you have the budget then go for this you will not regret it as usual there will be links to the station in the description below the video make sure you order the correct version 110 volts versus 240 volts ac because uh, this is not a universal input that was all for today i would appreciate your feedback in the comments below let me know what you think about this station do you have one or do you plan to get one thank you for watching and i'll see you next time with a new video